We're Trent and Allie, and this week things suddenly started moving at warp speed. This room is literally ready for sheetrock. Our siding order has been placed. We have a stronger roof, it's air, water sealed, and super insulated. Of course, there's a couple bumps. Yeah, I can't even feel it tugging on this end, so I don't know if this is gonna work. That would just be our luck. <laughs> but we're rolling with the punches. Now for the excessively nerve-wracking part. <laughs> and working so hard. I could get used to this. I am loving this right now. To make this house our home. That washer and dryer's coming! What's up guys and good morning. Today is a little bit different kind of day. Brandon actually has the day off because he has some dog vet appointments and some other things that he has to go to today. So he will not be coming up. But if you guys caught our last episode, Mike from Nevada Urethane, he came up and he started spray foaming and he got about half of the roof done. It's taking a lot longer than him or I thought it was going to. He's putting two layers of three inches of spray foam up there and it's, it's sealing everything up super nicely, but it's just taking a while. And we have to work with scaffolding and do all kinds of crazy stuff so that he can get into all the cavities. <sighs> it's a nightmare. Anyway, Brandon and I started doing the exterior foam on the outside of the house so that we can prepare for siding. And I would say we got about an eighth of the building done, which is great because we didn't actually do it for that long because we helped Mike do a lot of prep work for the spray foam. Now today, uh, we're only going to be working a half day because we also have some prior engagements, but we're going to be helping Mike do some of the spray foam and Allie and I are going to be measuring and trying to order our siding because like everything else in the world, I'm assuming it's on back order and we don't want to be months out from getting our siding. So let's get up there and start doing some measurements. Like I was saying earlier, we got some of the uh, foam and the rock wool exterior insulation up. The furring strips are mounted here. Still have to do a little strip above that window and some furring strips here. And then we can keep moving that direction. We've tried to use some siding estimators so that, uh, or calculators, so that we don't order way too much or way too little siding. Um, we are gonna build the structure number two and it's gonna have the same siding. So if we bought too much, it wouldn't be a huge problem. We would have it for the next structure. But if we don't buy enough and it's like a five week wait and then all of a sudden we're at 80% of the way done and we have to wait five more weeks to get the rest, that would be a huge problem. So we're gonna do some measurements right now. We're gonna start measuring all of the windows so that we can figure out exactly how much trim we need for the windows. And then we're gonna call BMC and we're gonna order our James Hardy siding. We've tried to do a lot of research and figure out what will look the best on the house. And I know everyone is so excited about the green. It's really grown on everybody. It's definitely grown on Trent. And he was like, what if we just get green siding? Um, because we all love it at this point. But we're gonna get a different color and I think it's gonna be different, but you guys are gonna really enjoy it as well. And I think we're gonna do a different color than the main house on the sunroom. So there will be two different colors of siding and a black roof. I think it will be really cool. At least I hope, we'll see what happens. And uh, we really need to just place this order because we placed the order for our roof and they told us it would be about a two week wait. We got everything confirmed and ordered and then they came back and said, well, actually it'll be here in about eight weeks. So I'm expecting probably about the same timeline for the siding. <laughs> <laughs> all right mike is here we helped him get all set up and ready to finish well 
continue spray foaming for the day and we took a bunch of measurements and I think maybe we're close to knowing about how much siding we need. Yeah, we're gonna do our best. We're gonna try to over order just a little bit and hopefully everything shows up quickly and it's everything that we need. So we're doing a rather unique color on the actual house and then the sunroom is actually gonna be a different color and Allie kept wanting to do wood siding, like real wood. And Which would be beautiful. It would be beautiful, but only for like a year because of how insane the sun and everything else is on our house. We would be like staining and maintaining it every nine months. It would be an absolute <laughs> disaster. So we're going to be doing a wood tone uh, in Ooh. James Hardy board. So it's a cement board with this uh, like 15 or 30 year warranty coating. We either had like this cedar color or like a dark brown or like kind of a caramel brown. So I think this is probably the one we're gonna go with. All right. Everybody, let us know in the comments what you think we should go with. The caramel, the cedar, or the chocolate. Those aren't the names of the colors, that's just what I'm calling them. <laughs> All right, our siding order has been placed. It's a little nerve wracking because we're ordering from two different companies, two different colors. We've never done this before. Hopefully it all matches. Hopefully we ordered enough and not too much and definitely not too little. They're gonna call us by the end of the day and give us a shipping estimate and hopefully it's not 10 years in the future. It's exciting because it means like that's finish work. That's like the end of the road, but we're not there yet. And. Uh, we don't even know if it's gonna work. So fingers crossed, we can't do much inside today because we don't wanna breathe in any of the fumes. So I'm gonna do a little bit of editing and some emails. I think we'll see you guys in the morning. Today we have a lot of exciting things going on. Before we get started, I wanted to let you guys know, today's video is sponsored by Omaze. Omaze is giving away an Airstream Caravelle and a 2021 Ford F-150 to tow it with. The Airstream comfortably sleeps four, so it's perfect for an adventure with family or friends. And forget roughing it, because your new home away from home has all the amenities. A memory foam mattress, a spacious kitchen with premium appliances, pet friendly ultra leather seating, and more. Hitch it to your all new F-150 with an outstanding towing and fuel capacity and a trailer tow package that includes all the necessary equipment to smoothly tow your Airstream. And donations benefit the Independence Fund, committed to empowering our nation's wounded, injured, or ill veterans and helping them overcome mental and emotional wounds incurred from the line of duty. So for your chance to win an Airstream Caravelle and a 2021 Ford F-150 and support a great cause with the Independence Fund, click the link in our description or go to omaze.com slash Trent Alley. Go ahead and check it out if you guys are interested in winning. Thanks again to Omaze for sponsoring today's video. I'm gonna finish my coffee and we're gonna go get started. Good morning, guys. We are uh, just kind of cruising right along, actually. Mike is almost done with all of the spray foam, which means the insulation in the house is almost 100% complete, which is really cool, because drywall is the next step. They've already gotten to work this morning. The trailer with the insulation is already running strong, and uh, I'm just looking at the mess that I need to clean up now. We had some friends over last night for our very first ever dinner hosted at the house on the property. We actually ate outside, but just gave us a glimpse into what it will be like eventually when we can fully host people because that's something that we really enjoy doing and we're excited to do a lot more of. How's it going? It looks so different in here. Dude, Mike is killing it. Seriously. He finished the ceiling yesterday and then he got about half of the basement done. I think today he's gonna finish the rest of the basement and do the ceiling in the sunroom. Really? Um, basically all we need to do is get all the stuff out of the sunroom into the house so that he can do that in there. Cool. All right, so I'm not exactly sure how much you guys have seen because things have been a little scatterbrained around here lately, but I'm gonna take you up and show you what the upstairs is looking like. I already think you guys kind of saw what's going on in the basement. So up here, Mike is completely finished filling these cavities with six inches of spray foam, super, super insulated. 
and air sealed roof. One of the biggest reasons that I decided to go with spray foam in the ceiling and not do rock wool or, or any type of any other type of insulation in the ceiling is this is closed cell spray foam. So it's entirely waterproof. Water cannot penetrate it, cannot soak through it, anything like that. So say we have a puncture that goes through the roof, maybe when we're putting in the roofing or something like that, and water gets in there. Now with any type of regular insulation, that water would seep in, it would start to erode, it would start to rot out the wood, it would go through the insulation, it would go through the sheetrock or the tongue and groove, whatever ends up on the ceiling. It would cause huge, huge problems. Now, you can put an air barrier up there, but that's not gonna stop water from coming through. So, with spray foam, you can puncture a hole in the roof and the spray foam will seal that area. The, the water can't go anywhere. So maybe your roof sheathing is compromised, but nothing inside ever gets damaged. So that's the number one reason to do spray foam on the roof is because it air seals. It's an excellent air and water barrier and it's a superior insulation. So now that our uh, roof has been turned into one solid piece because that spray foam basically turns into like concrete between each joist, we have a stronger roof. It's air, water sealed, and super insulated. I'm really excited with how it turned out. There's a little bit of trimming that needs to be done, but other than that, it is almost ready for its insulation inspection. Really stoked. So Mike still has to do the roof out here in the sunroom and you can feel just walking into the sunroom the heat difference now a lot of the heat that we've been feeling in the house is just radiating through the roof sheathing because it was black and there's just no insulation there so now that that's insulated the house is actually retaining its temperature quite nicely now he's got to come out here and do this as soon as he finishes doing the basement so he has about half the walls to do in the basement then he's going to do the roof in here and then he's done and we can call for insulation inspection the only thing is we kind of don't want the inspector to have to come up here a thousand times so we're going to try and get our permanent power get the the cable pulled from the street up to the house get the shutoff put in get the main meter put in and call for our permanent power inspection and our insulation inspection at the same time <sighs> we got a lot going on i think as soon as brandon shows up we're going to start doing exterior insulation but right now i've got to move all this stuff that's in here out of the sunroom and into the house so that he can come in here and do the spray foam once he's done with the basement. I'm, I'm just going in a million different directions right now, but I'm doing my best. I don't talk about this that often, but it is May and May is uh, Mental Health Awareness Month. And we also just lost a person in our community pretty recently, Lee, as many of you guys have known. Um, so maybe it's a good time to talk about it. I deal with uh, pretty severe anxiety pretty frequently, and it can be triggered by a whole slew of different things. And sometimes the same thing will or won't trigger me to have a panic attack. And it can be something as simple as getting lightheaded, like moving stuff around from the sunroom to the house, I got a little lightheaded and it triggered a panic attack. And I can't film when that happens. I can't work. Um, really, I just feel like I'm gonna die. That's like the only way to explain it. And usually the only thing that can ever settle me down or suffice it is to go for a walk or to go for a drive. And I think just like that methodical moving kind of helps get my mind off of it and I can calm down with a little bit of time. So in the middle of the day, we had to uh, kind of just tell Brandon to take a chill pill for a minute and Allie and I had to go for a walk. So we took the dogs for a walk. We walked for a little over two miles and now I feel a little better. So we're gonna head up into the house right now and start working on the exterior foam. A little bit of time wasted technically, but uh, if you don't help maintain yourself, then you're gonna be in trouble. I just thought I'd share that with you guys because when other people tell me about their anxiety, it always makes me feel better and feel like I'm not alone and I'm not the only person that deals with this. So if you're a person that deals with it and maybe you look at me and think I don't have anxiety, I do and it's really bad, especially when I fly in airplanes.
but anyway. Trans anxiety is something we've been dealing with for a very long time, and there are a lot of ways to work through anxiety and any mental health issues that you might have. And it is important for him to talk about it, and that's something he's trying to share and deal with in different and new ways so that we can work through it easier because it's not going away and it might even be getting worse. And that's okay. It doesn't make you less of a man or less of a person to feel your feelings, to acknowledge that you have anxiety or other mental health issues that you're working through. We're gonna leave some resources in the description if you have anything that you're working through as well. And if you're not okay right now, that's okay. We love you and there are people out there that love you as well. So on that note, I'm gonna get these dogs cleaned up and we are gonna head inside and hopefully make some big progress on the house today. I pull into your driveway, it's a Saturday night You look like a million bucks wearing that dress I like You're smiling but there's something missing in your eyes Girl, I can tell that you have so After six months of no service on the porta potty the Honey Bucket guys are here to clean the toilet for Brandon Let's have a drink, just relax, all your problems will fade if you're ready for a good time, count on me. There's a party in the backyard, dance your problems away. I'm all about the good vibes. I know you're all about the good vibes. Do you know how much I love you? We are putting up the exterior foam on this side of the house. Uh, we, we've got a good section of it done. The main reason that we're starting over here, we have our air conditioning uh, copper lines that are here. We have our propane entrance right here. We have the furnace intake and exhaust right there. All of this stuff has to be stubbed out through the foam. And then I basically, I have to mount our, our shut off and then I have to run the wire through this hole into the basement to the main panel for our permanent power. Mm. So I basically need to finish the insulation and everything here, get the furring strips all in place so that we can mount this big, ugly power shut off box. And we had to get like one that's so big, it's made for shutting <laughs> off a nuclear power plant <laughs> because of the size wire that we have to run. But that's pretty cool. That means soon, as soon as this section is done being insulated, we can start to install things to get us to permanent power, which means we won't have to run on extension cords anymore. We won't have to worry about tripping the breaker every time we plug in a vacuum or something small. And maybe we can get that washer and dryer we know we need <laughs> grandma's laundromat has been killing it lately so <laughs> and it gives us an excuse to go down and hang out with my grandparents that's true That's it? What? Wow. Look at how freaking enormous this box is with this little teeny thing. <laughs> oh. That's cool. That's powerful. You want to put it up? Fetch me my pony. We are fresh out of ponies. <laughs> <laughs> like a cowboy wearing his hat right now. The good news is Mike is done doing all the spray foam. He's just doing his little cleanup ritual right now, blowing little spray foam dust balls all over the place. And then he's gonna be leaving after we give him one of my arms and one of my legs as payment. And- It was worth it. It was worth it. And then maybe <laughs> we can start uh, figuring out how to install this. I see all these holes and like, they've gotta be to mount a bus bar or a ground bar or hmm. probably do a little research, but- You don't put this on after siding? Nope. The update on the siding is we have the order placed, it's all confirmed, and it should be here in, what did you say, a couple weeks? I don't know. The guy said, hey, just want to let you know, it's going to be a couple weeks. And I said, okay, do you have a date? And he said, they just said a couple weeks. And I was like, okay. Great. If you could find out what that means, that'd be great. And he's like, okay. I 
been trying to offer these guys a hand for the last little bit and honestly this is just pretty much a two-man job and Mike is in the house cleaning up all of the spray foam excess so there isn't too much for me to be doing right now and it's the first really warm hot sunny day so I have a camp chair set up in the shade and can I just say, I could get used to this. I am loving this right now. And I cannot wait to spend so much more time just sitting outside, enjoying the sounds of the summer in the shade. It's incredible. I'm so excited. <laughs> you guys are doing a really good job. Thanks. Turn it off. Oh, hey. We're off. <laughs> we made a lot of progress. We got all of the foam and all of the rock wool put up over here. We got all these battens put up. We just have to put the uh, corner piece over there on the corner, but we don't have those put together yet. And we got the electrical box hung to shut off. It looks beautiful. Oh, that was uh, the guy talking about the siding. Six to seven weeks. That's not bad. No. Could be worse. We've got some really cool color schemes going on here and maybe it's gonna be cool. Maybe it's gonna look like Joseph in the Technicolored coat. I don't really know because <laughs> you guys will just have to wait and see. But in six to seven weeks, our siding should show up. And I think in less than six weeks now, our roofing should show up. Maybe for the next six weeks, we're just gonna be doing electrical and exterior insulation and- Drywall. Hopefully drywall. Woo! Who knows? I'm out of here. You're out of right. here. Thank you so much, Mike. It's kind of fumey in there, so we're not gonna take you guys in there, but tomorrow morning, we'll take you in, show you everything now that it's finished. How does that look? <laughs> it still looks really good. <laughs> cool. We'll see you guys in the morning. Today's gonna be a big day. Leek is excited. Are you excited? Are you excited? Frank, are you excited? Today, Brandon went and picked up the wire that's gonna be pulled from the street all the way up to the house. It's like this big around, maybe not. It's probably like this big around. It's 320 feet long, and we have to figure out a way to rig it up to the pulling rope to pull it through all of the conduit. And it's gonna be really nerve wracking. Also, Today is forecasted to be about as hot as yesterday, which means it's a sun hat day. And we gotta get to work. It's not as big as I thought. Yeah, me either. I thought it was gonna be way bigger. So as you guys saw yesterday, we got the shutoff box mounted on the side of the house. We still need to get a couple of the connecting pieces to connect our conduit to that box. And then we do have the meter down in the shelter logic and it needs to be installed down at the street and we need a couple connecting pieces there as well. But the first thing we need to do is get this wire pulled from the house all the way down to the street. And there's just, there's a lot that's involved here. So this has not been opened since it was installed. If we just tried to pull that wire with this mule tape, it would probably end up just breaking, or at least that's what everyone has told me. So I had to buy pulling rope, which is like a 5 eighths rope that has like 16,000 pound pulling strength or something crazy. So we have to use this mule tape, attach it to the rope all the way at the bottom of the street, pull this up while pushing that rope in there, which I don't even know if we're gonna be able to do, but we're gonna try. And uh, then once the rope gets all the way up to this point, we can tie the rope onto the end of the wire, start feeding the wire. I have a five gallon bucket of glycerin lube. We're gonna pour a bunch of that down the pipe and then start pushing the wire through and hopefully between that lube, the rope, and the winch on my truck, we should be able to slowly pull that wire all the way down to the street. At least we've got our fingers crossed. 
Before we get started with the electrical, I guess we should probably take you guys in and show you everything Mike accomplished yesterday. So let's go check it out. In here in the sunroom, he got all of the ceiling in here. He got about six inches of foam through the entire roof cavity. This room is fully insulated, fully air barriered, fur stripped, spray foamed, electrical's done. Like this room is literally ready for sheetrock. <laughs> Stoked. So he did the entire roof cavity of the main house in here. And you can already feel that there's a huge difference in here. Yesterday, all the windows were open and it still stayed cool in here, even though it was hot outside because the sun isn't beating down on the roof and radiating all of the heat into the house. So the first thing you probably notice when you come downstairs is the bottom of the staircase. So we actually had him spray about two inches of foam on the underside of the staircase. It just ties the entire staircase together. It makes it more rigid. It makes it more soundproof. They feel solid and they sound solid when you walk on them. And it also provides a little bit of insulation from the cold air coming up from the basement. Now as we get down here into the basement, he did all of the interior walls down here in the basement, including everything under the stairs. This staircase also got spray foam on the underside of it. Everything over here above the panel, behind the water heater, behind the furnace, all of these rim board sections here, everywhere that he could reach, he got spray foam in. Once we close all these windows, it's gonna be really easy to keep this a nice air conditioned or heated climate in the winter or the summer really excited and now we're actually ready to call for our insulation inspection but we want to do our permanent power at the same time so we got to get this wire pulled we got to get the meter mounted we got to get everything in here connected and hooked up <sighs> we got our work cut out for us today all right so last year when we ran this conduit we had curtis dig a trench he ran the conduit all the way from the side of the house all the way down here this is the transformer that we need to connect to, and we were under the impression that Rocky Mountain Power was gonna pull a wire all the way up to the house and put the meter on the side of our house. And it wasn't until after they came out and inspected what we had done before they said, oh, if you're more than 100 feet away from the transformer, we won't pull the wire. So now we have to pull the wire. So basically what Rocky Mountain Power said last year is that if we dig up and put a meter in right here, they'll connect to our meter and then our meter will we'll have to pull the wire ourselves from the meter all the way up to the house. I know that the power lines are actually out here in the street. So they're only in this direction here and our conduit is right here. As well as I know Curtis dug a huge trench right here. So they're definitely not here, but we do need to uncover this pipe at least far enough away to put the meter probably about right here hmm. then we have to cut the pipe put that elbow on it but before we put the elbow on it we're gonna pull the wire so i guess uh we gotta get digging All right, this is a major here goes nothing moment. Definitely. We are winging this. Yeah, we made it. Now for the excessively nerve wracking part. <laughs> Let's go try and rig this rope up to the wire. This wire will fit through the pipe, no questions asked. They're big long sweep 90s, so it should go down the corners no problem. The only issue is we don't have a pulling grip. We have to somehow attach the rope to this cable. So the only thing that I can really think is to take the loop 
that's on that, that rope, stick it down here, and then bend these wires back like that so that the loop is through there, and then put a hose clamp on there and just tighten that thing to China and pray. Huh. And it's gonna pull on this loop and hopefully that hose clamp can hold on. Who knows if this is gonna work. We're gonna start pulling it by hand, get it as far as we can. Then we're gonna use the truck and the forerunner to set up a pulley system that's gonna continue to pull the wire the rest of the way. Ready to pull. The lube is in. The cable's going. Strong. Strong like a bull. Oh, that's all we got. That's it. Oh boy. Like it won't even go into the pipe? I got it barely started, but. Yeah, I'm pulling as hard as I can and it's just like taking the slack out of the rope and that's it. Yeah, I can't even feel it tugging on this end. So I don't know if this is gonna work. I guess it's time to go get the truck. So we've got the forerunner set up there. The snatch block is connected to the forerunner now. A snatch block, uh, it's basically a pulley. So if you guys remember, when you learn about like levers and wedges and pulleys and things like that. It's like elementary physics, basically. A pulley makes it so you can lift or pull twice the amount with the same amount of force. So it puts way less strain on the rope and way less strain on the winch to pull something with a snatch block. This cable should not have more force on it than either of these winches could handle. So I'm not worried about anything breaking, but it's just gonna make it much easier on the actual machinery and it should make this a nice, smooth, even pull. So <laughs> Ideally. Ideally. <laughs> I'm gonna tie a knot right here and we're gonna hook it on and then Brandon's gonna go up and try helping us force the wire down. We'll be communicating with walkie talkies and hopefully we'll be done by sundown. Here goes nothing. Something's happening. It's actually working. Well, well hopefully it has just pulled out the, the hose clamp and it's just pulling nothing. How are we looking? Like butter. Like butter. Not quite here, but I'm starting to get some blue goo. I'm anticipating the baby showing its head here in just a few few more feet hopefully. Come on baby. Show your head. <laughs> oh! Oh! Yeah! Ah! Yeah! Woo! Keep going, keep going. He said hold on. Oh, that is an ugly baby. Dude, the baby's head is halfway out and you ran out of slack or what? <laughs> This thing is covered in avatar blue goo. Ready? <laughs> Our baby wire. Ew. Pretty cool, we did it. We did it, dude. Good job. I'm really surprised we did it. <laughs> <sighs> I'm just really glad that, that worked. I'm also really glad that it worked, except now it looks like it's going to rain. <laughs> At this elevation, usually that means snow, and <laughs> that
that would just be our luck. We got a couple of things to do. We gotta kind of weatherproof some of this stuff. I don't think we're calling it a day. I called and talked to the guy at Rocky Mountain Power and he gave me the information that I needed about where the meter needs to be, which way it has to face. I need to cement it, the conduit that I need to run for them. Perfect timing, because we're about to go to Home Depot and get all those supplies right now. Perfect timing, <laughs> but it's uh, Friday for us right now. Friday. I'm not going to Home Depot. <laughs> I'm going to Home Depot on Monday. <laughs> we're gonna get all of the parts to finish up, installing all of that stuff. I'm hoping Wednesday, we're gonna be able to call for our insulation and permanent power inspection. And you know what that means? That washer and dryer's coming. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Allie's cute. <laughs> <sighs> I don't know if you guys had a nail biter of a day like we did, Ooh. worrying about pulling that wire, but it was nerve wracking and I'm really glad that it worked out. Yeah, it's been a, a long week, I feel like, but we've gotten so much done. I'm so happy the spray foam and all the insulation and the air <sighs> barrier is just finished. We are like making so much progress it's been so a big quickly. Week. Yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed coming along on today's adventure. If you did, make sure you show us by giving us a big thumbs up on today's video. Consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't already. Thanks again to Omaze for sponsoring today's video. Click the link in our description to check them out. And we'll see you guys on the next Adios. one. Adios!